All right, I'm ready, right, boys. Let's go. Anyway, sorry. Let's, go. <clears throat> let's go. Let's go. All right, over under on Glenn messing up this week. Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining us for the PebCAC podcast, a weekly information security show featuring some all around good people. It is week 23 of 2023, and I'm slowly regaining vision in my left eye after it got swollen shut over the long weekend. I'm Chris hey, Louie. You should stop letting your wife slap you around, Chris. That's just what I'm saying. <laughs> Let's get that straight right now. <laughs> yeah, that domestic violence is no joke. <laughs> hey, wink if you're okay. <laughs> or if you're in danger. <laughs> so. I'm Chris Louie, and I now need to wear goggles when pulling weeds in the yard. With me, I have my co-host, the Cloud God, who only gets swollen when he does bare-knuckle boxing matches. Yeah, I wish I could say I do that kind of fun stuff. But I'm with you, man. These allergies, they'd be kicking my butt right now. But I just got back from New Mexico, which I know you're thinking, like, why on earth would you go there? They asked something Breaking called Breaking Bad, me. of course. No, I didn't go to Albuquerque. I actually went to Las Cruces, which New Mexico State is there. I had no idea. Um, New Mexico State University. Uh, but on the flip side, about 40 minutes from there is a place called the White Sands Dunes. And it looks like you're like in Belize on these white sand beaches. There's no, there's no water or ocean there, but it was still pretty cool. And we did the whole like, you know, tried to go sledding, which didn't work out very well. Maybe I'm too big. Maybe I'm not. I have no idea. Um, but we did see like the sunset and whatever. But I did get a federal speeding ticket. So there's that. A federal? What do you have to do to get a federal speeding ticket? Is it criminal? This? Uh, I have no idea. I, it's criminal in the sense that if I don't pay it, they're going to come to my house and come, you know, yeah. abduct me. Yeah. Were you were you on uh, BLM? Was that what it was? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but here's a, so, like you know, whatever. Like I don't care. Like if if I'm doing something wrong, just part of me is like I know that I was speeding, so I have no problem with it. The part that I did that I disagree with is that he said I was doing 44 and a 25, but it was clearly marked as as a 35. So. In my mind, it was nine over, but whatever. I didn't realize this until I looked at the ticket and they were, you know, long gone. So I'm like, part of me is like, whatever, pay the ticket. You were speeding, whether it was nine or 19 over, right? Like, just do it, be a man. And then part of me is just like, don't you guys have better things to do than to worry about me? Like, you, number one, I'm out at the white sand dunes. And you won't even let me off road. And I bring my freaking off roading vehicle to off road. You won't let me have any fun. Now you're going to give me a, a speeding ticket because it's Memorial Day weekend? Whatever. You guys suck. She, she contested in court. Say that you're only doing nine over. I'm sure the fine will be less. Get yeah, or right, so number one. Do I really want to go back to Las Cruces <laughs> to defend this in court? And no. risk getting another ticket. <laughs> yeah, and well, no, I wouldn't. Uh, but guess how much the ticket was? I don't uh, know. Three hundred. One fifty. Federal land. Oh, look at Chris. He's he's pretty close. So. A uh, hundred eight dollar speeding ticket and a thirty dollar fee, so one thirty eight, whatever. All right, That's that consider that a win. Yeah, I had a roommate that got a speeding ticket in Arizona, and it was considered a misdemeanor, so he now has a criminal record. Ooh. What was he doing? Like two hundred and a and a sixty five or fifty five, forty five. It's twenty over. Yeah. yeah, I think it was like ninety and a sixty five. So yeah, I think it was twenty five over. That's at least so. Number one, I think you can still do the uh, the driver school on that. But like, any if you're twenty miles per hour over, they have the right to impound your vehicle at that moment. Like you, like so. Hey, you just got to take it. No big deal. Yeah, it was a rental. It was a bright red Camaro. It was like asking to get pulled over. So wait a minute. You were we were one mile per hour away from getting impounded. Each. Well, I don't know about that on BLM, right? I don't know how that works over there, but. Mm. Hmm. All right. And we have the returning Glenn Medina, fresh off the demo of his life. Hey, guys. Happy to be back. Thanks for holding my spot. For some reason, I just noticed this, that I'm always gone when we have a guest. You guys plan that? What's going on? You guys don't like me. I think we had a guess because we wanted to avoid the the back and forth just between me and Brian. Oh, gotcha. I had to like say, I was on something weeks last week. I was <laughs> in rare form. You missed out, man. Brian didn't even know you were gone because we, we brought another Asian guy on the podcast. Oh, yeah, that's False. right. We look just like no. each other. 
<laughs> Asian Jim. We brought on Asian Jim. Asian Jim. No guests this week. Combined, we have decades of information security experience here, not just to educate, but to entertain. We've got four awesome stories for this week, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. This week, we're going to talk about the return of the Kia boys, attackers using the .zip top-level domain, for our third topic, Tesla struggles with insider threats, and we'll close with the expected Apple announcement. Ooh. What are, what are for our first about? topic, I thought it would be fun to revisit one of our most well-received stories about the Kia boys with a Z. It's been hey almost it's been almost four months since Kia and Hyundai released a software update oh, to it. fix. Hyundai. <laughs> to fix the, their complete and lack of foresight in removing the car immobilizer from millions of their vehicles. You may recall that Kia and Hyundai cars and SUVs are susceptible to a novel attack where someone with just a USB cable can steal a car because of the poor mechanical design of the keyed ignition and the lack of an immobilizer. Kia and Hyundai dealers are offering a free software update so the car will not start unless the owner unlocks the car with the key fob. Despite the software update, people are still reporting their cars are getting stolen even after they get the update. Kia and Hyundai report that less than 7% of the eligible fleet has the new software upgrade. The problem has gotten so bad that some cities are suing Kia and Hyundai for the massive amounts of excessive police work and mayhem their design flaw is causing. To add insult to injury, if someone has their car stolen and it's recovered, they have to wait weeks for parts to repair the steering column because there's a nationwide shortage of these parts due to how many of them have to be replaced. So, so did you guys watch the breaking news on this? And I guess the newscasters were making it out like, you could steal this car, and they would show you know the, the Apple cable or some USB cable by hacking into the car with this cable. And so it made it made me look and I'm like, what the heck are they doing there? They can you really just hack in when just what are you plugging into? And Hacking's all they were using was the, Yeah, that's a <laughs> real stretch. It was basically break apart the column, pull out the, uh, the, the 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 key lock and then jam the USB key inside there cuz it fit perfectly to the male end of the uh, what was sticking out. The ignition, yeah, the it's, ignition, it's a phys- yeah. it's a layer one attack. It's a physical layer attack. There's, yeah, <laughs> the, and the only reason the USB cable works is because, like you said, the female side is the perfect fit to turn the ignition. That's it. So just know this doesn't work USB C. So if you're going to go out there and steal a vehicle this weekend, <laughs> don't don't bring your more modern USB cable. Got to be but USB those cables A. Correct. Are, those cables are probably more expensive than the cars themselves. You know, if you, especially mm. if you buy an Apple cable. Yeah, the official Apple cables. Yeah. Like Chris, I'm gonna be honest with you right now. The the fact that you keep mispronouncing Hyundai makes me just want to end this podcast and never join again. Like I don't, I, I just want to just walk away. I'm done. Freaking nuts. How many like, different you know, ways did he say, Japan, you say do it. Hyundai? I'm with you. Hyundai. I'm with you. Hyundai. But we're in America, Hyundai. baby. No. Damn it, Chris. I just can't stop laughing. The banter between you two is just funny. So. It is. It, and the fact that it annoys Brian so much is why I keep doing it. No, I think you just, you like, I don't know, you like to double down on your mistakes. That's what you really like to do. Yeah, I'm stubborn. I never back down. Who's going to win this? I don't know. Come on, Kia, get it. And Hyundai, get it together, baby. We're done yeah, talking about you guys. There's a little bit of controversy that people are arguing that this should be a recall because if it's a recall, they have to proactively notify every owner and like mail them a postcard and contact them. But right now it's just a service bulletin. So basically anyone that comes in for a service, they'll do it. If you go in there just for this, they'll do it for free, but it's more reactive than being proactive. And the car manufacturers are arguing, well, it's not a recall. There's no, there's nothing dangerous and there's nothing inherently wrong with it. Yeah, it's just it's very easy to break into, but it's not doesn't classify it as a recall. If you bought a car that was five thousand dollars cheaper than everyone else, you don't get a locking me- mechanism with it, and so therefore you get hacked with a USB cable. 
tough. All I know is I'm I'm actually a Kia fan. The Telluride is such a yeah that 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 little SUV is so badass. We we had one for like a couple of years. Nothing was this was amazing. And then the Genesis had. version is even yeah had had. We should have One kept the Kia that boys took off with it. <laughs> no, yeah, right. <laughs> My wife agrees. We should have kept that vehicle, but really, she would prefer that over the over the Tesla. <laughs> oh God, here we go with, with Glenn. Tesla with a Z and the Kia boys with a Z. Yeah, I guess if you really had to have uh, one of these defective vehicles, probably putting like the club on it, I think might deter people from trying to steal it. Or buy a stick version of any of these vehicles. True, yeah. That's the millennial anti-theft device is a, a manual transmission. I didn't, You guys are going to both drive a stick, right? Can your wives? No, I got rid I, of my stick I, car before I was able to teach her. I still have two. Can your wife drive them? Yeah. Yeah, I taught her. She better know how to drive them. <laughs> Maybe she forgot. Yup. Yeah, the cybersecurity parallel here is when companies constantly purchase software and hardware from vendors that keep having things like pre-auth remote code execution vulnerabilities. At this point, buying these devices is an internet kick me sign, and I won't vendor shame on here, but if you want to look it up, Microsoft put out a report of how China got into critical infrastructure using a particular vendor's device and they they name shame this vendor but this particular vendor keeps coming up again and again as the reason companies get breached and i have no idea why people still do business with them me neither really? they suck yeah do, do you do we all agree that if you see like you go to someone's house or god forbid like someone's like corporate network and they're on like the 192 don't you just like lose a tiny bit of respect for them? Like that's like the universal like come f with my network. <laughs> well, as long as you have less than what sixty five thousand devices, that that network's fine. Yeah, what, what do you care if it's a one ninety two? That's what most home networks are, though, right? Or are you talking about no. corporate networks? Well, either one, but yeah, I don't like the one ninety two. I would I would do one seventy two if I, but I, I do the ten net at the house, so whatever. But what happens when you've exa- when you're a company that exhausted all those internal ranges? Oh, then you got into you have to get into like carrier grade NAT space, like the 100.64 and the other non routables yeah. No, what you do is you go to cloud solution. That is, you start acquiring these other companies that are in the same address space as you. You can just have complete IP overlap and never worry about it. Hmm, I wonder what that is. That's another way to do it, for sure. Glenn's like, oh, I, never... I, don't, I don't deal with that anymore. Yeah, there's a, there's complications in that. <laughs> Lies. I'm just kidding. What? All right. We're gonna, I'm going to send a gangster over to your house and cut you, Glenn. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> talking about casting aspersions here. Yeah. Oh. Jeez. <laughs> All right, we'll keep it civil. So for our second topic, this story is a callback to our story two weeks ago about the brain-dead move that Google did by releasing the .zip top-level domain. Not missing a beat, threat actors out there have developed a novel attack method using the .zip top-level domain. As we discussed, some clients and things like Twitter DMs are automatically convert file name dot zip into a url https colon slash slash file name dot zip it's the clever colon whack whack not slash slash no one says that is whack whack <laughs> colon slash slash file name dot zip <laughs> hyundai <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's about to leave the podcast <laughs> yeah forever not even for this episode it's gone i'm gonna go start up my own web my... oh it'll be the brian deach hyundai podcast you know i have nothing to do with the car it's called that the hyundai podcast the clever attackers host a website on file name.zip that makes it look like winrar or some kind of unzipping utility when they're actually on the website that's just skinned with the winrar gui the website even offers things like fake av scanning to give users a false sense of security the developers took it even a step further 
and put WinRAR, in, and in parentheses, they put evaluation copy at the top of the window, knowing full well that literally nobody has ever paid for WinRAR ever. We said it before, and we'll say it again. There's no legitimate content hosted on .zip top-level domains, and it should be blocked immediately. Agreed. And by the way, if I ever win the lottery, I'm going to buy my own version of WinRAR. I'll be the one guy that bought, actually paid for it. Oh, yeah. money. <laughs> oh, it's, it's my eyes, guys. Bad news. <clears throat> I thought this was clever, though. I'm taking it to the next level to make it look like you're inside an unzipping utility just to give it that much more legitimacy. People are dumb. My wife sent me a, a link earlier today. She's like, I'm helping out. Like, she's like taking care of like this old woman that's not like even part of our family. My wife's this better person than I'll ever be. She's like, hey, uh, what are you doing this website? Is this legit? I'm like, there's no way in hell this thing is legit. Like, the first thing it did is redirect to port 80, right? And it's like, the thing's skin <laughs> oh. and it's horrible. I'm like, I thought it was trying to install like a, a toolbar on top of all of it. I'm like, oh, this is bad news. She's like, well, she, she, what did she say? Hold on. This is great. She clicked uh, on it. And she thinks she money. was scammed because they told her to get her package from here. So, not only did, they, did she already spend money with this company, now she's using this website to do the tracking delivery. Uh. I'm like, it's gone forever. <laughs> Ouch. Adding insult to injury. It's where I buy my Propecia. Propecia.zip. <laughs> your al- alopecia? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Propecia, no, the, propecia, isn't that like a make the my hair, hair grow back? It's like yeah. And then alopecia is uh, Will Speth's husband, right? <laughs> <laughs> the opposite. No hair. Yeah, no hair. Okay. Alopecia. <laughs> propecia P. Yeah. Uh, you know, I can't take credit for j- that joke. I heard. I think Theo Vaughn was talking about like he's all bald people. He's like Will Smith's husband, so <laughs> he's funny. No, nope. we asked the question: What could possibly go wrong by releasing this .dot zip top level domain out there, and, and now it's out there? You sent us uh, the the your mom .dot zip one, right? Yes, yes. So there's a funny .dot zip domain making its round it is your mom.zip as of right now it's not hosting malware i can't speak for when you actually listen to it so buyer beware but right now if you go to your mom.zip every time you fresh refresh the page it throws a new message like my favorite one was uh, the return message was 413 request entity too large request entity too large what the heck is that it's just saying like your mom's fat you know, your mom.zip <laughs> <laughs> it's a I wonder what a your, it's a your mama joke inside of a four thirteen. <laughs> yeah, they really missed out on the, you know, like manipulating some headers and stuff because when you hit it on eighty, it just does a redirect to HBS. It is on Cloudflare. Woo woo! Look at them hosting Ooh. nefarious things, and then it just comes back with you know the typical stuff you see in headers. So nothing special. Yeah, just a lot of insults to your mother there. I saw on Infosec Twitter, I should have pulled it up and had it had it ready here, but it was interesting. If you look at the newly registered domains for .zip, a lot of them are exactly what you expect. File backup .zip, important files .zip. There's one that said uh, VX Underground package .zip, because VX Underground is that site that hosts malware for research purposes. So someone just went out there and registered VX Underground files .zip. Try to lure people there. Where do you see recently registered domains at? I haven't even thought about that in a while. There's a screenshot that they posted. Uh, I don't know where they grabbed it from, but there were some interesting ones in there. But 100%, this is either going to be used for security researchers, researchers pointing out how stupid this is, or it's going to be used for bad actors to host their malware. One or the other has to be true. If I find that tweet, I'll post it in the show notes. For our third topic, an internal, quote, whistleblower at Tesla has leaked over 100 gigabytes of data to a German newspaper alleging safety concerns about the company's autopilot system, as well as personal information on its employees. Mm, is it is it a allegedly leaked or allegedly stole? Because I know we're calling <laughs> it a whistleblower, but you, I don't know. I mean, you could have been like, they're doing some... Quote whistleblower. It's. Yeah. <clears throat> I could see like if you wanted to leak the safety reports, maybe you know if they're trying to prove that it's a cover up. But leaking the personal data on the employees is 
Seemed like a low blow, a scumbag move there. Yeah. The data contains 3,900 incident reports of phantom braking due to false collision warnings and other complaints about the company's driver assist systems. I own a Tesla and I use autopilot, and I've actually experienced this phantom braking, but I treat autopilot as a driver assist feature, and I always pay attention, keep my hands on the wheel, so if the car suddenly breaks out of nowhere, I just speed up. What about you guys? Other than Brian's Tesla trying to kill him at the car wash, have you had any autopilot oddities? I've had. I used to have a lot of like phantom braking, but not on autopilot. Like you'd just be on cruise control and just would throw on the brakes. But now that, I, <clears throat> but now that I have autopilot, yeah, definitely don't see it. But I treat, you know, autopilot like like McDonald's, right? It is like try it maybe once or twice a month and show it some respect. I'm not trying to die in that thing, especially if I have the, the wife and kids in the car, that's for sure. It's like driving with my kid, except I'm still sitting in the driver's seat. It's like, it's killing me. <laughs> so. Do you have the yeah, autopilot? I, I, or you didn't, you, have you, like, you can buy it for like I, 99 bucks a month, right? 200. Yeah. 200, okay. Yeah, but I, I just do the freeway double tap down and have it stay in the lane. Even that scares me on 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 slow mosey turns. I don't know what that damn thing is doing. So I uh, I took it to Tucson. It was like a two and a half hour drive, and two things I noticed about that because the, the the day previous I went to Flagstaff, but I went in my my truck. Is that number one? I, I felt I didn't feel, I didn't feel tired at all. Like before I got there, I was like, oh my god, like I'm here. And it was all kind of pretty much interstate travel. And it was just kind of flying. And then what I also learned is that if I wear my sunglasses, I can pretty much look anywhere without it, like, freaking out. Like, hey, pay attention to the road. Um, and then I thought, oh, I wonder if I can take a nap. And so I closed my eyes for, like, three seconds. I'm like, no, there's no way in hell I can take a nap. This is way too scary. <laughs> flying down the thing at 85 miles per hour. <clears throat> but you guys Diaper have seen assist. people, like, passed out, right? You guys have seen people passed out in, in YouTube videos. I sit there. I'm yeah. like, oh, stinking way. I've seen it. In video, I never I've seen videos and news reports. I've never seen it in person before of somebody either passed out or like reading a book or on their laptop while on autopilot. So I haven't seen that, but I've seen the videos of them or someone that climbs in the back seat. Mm. I don't know how you do because you have to you still have to nudge the steering wheel. So maybe you can get away with it for a couple of seconds, but that's it. They have they used to sell those defeat devices. So back in the day, you could stuff an orange in the one of the crevices of the steering wheel and it would know that you're holding on to it and then there are specially made devices you can clip onto the steering wheel to make it feel like someone's nudging it so the, those devices do exist you know incredibly dangerous to use but they do exist you mean chris didn't print you one he printed me one <laughs> good job christopher no he didn't print me one next time i'll get it but kind of going back to this whole like whistleblower like if I were to, to suspect, like, the biggest bullseye has always historically been on Microsoft, right? Like, you, you, you do that, like, you're having a good time. But now I think Tesla's got to be moving up there. Because imagine, like, if I think they sold, like, 300,000 or 250,000 Model 3 or Model Ys, I think, last quarter. I mean, that's a lot of vehicles on the road. If you can somehow take over autopilot and just drive them all into a Ford dealership before an oil change, like, that would be pretty hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that would be. Do you think that there's, I mean, there must be like crazy bug bounties and stuff for Tesla. I oh, know yeah. like for the cars they do. I don't know how, how Tesla does internal security. I know for sure the cars do because they're always at Pwn to Own where you can win the Model 3. But I don't know about their internal security. But what I do know is it is a great lesson in insider threat modeling because the files were allegedly stolen by an internal Tesla employee in the fact that they were able to exfiltrate 100 gigabytes of data undetected speaks to their internal security controls. And I don't know if you guys remember this, but about two years ago, a Russian operative attempted to bribe a Tesla employee to launch a ransomware attack from inside the corporate mm -hmm. network, but the employee alerted the FBI instead of taking the million dollar bribe. So it's you can't rely on people being good citizens as a security le measure. It kind of reminds me of like back in the day when they were talking about stopping the uh, like the, the drug trade, right? They're like they they show the FBI or whatever, de not the Department of Homeland Security, but they're like seizing all this cocaine, uh, you know, on the on the ship, right, through a container. But meanwhile, like underneath it, like they're using a submarine to 
take all the stuff from underneath the, the, the ship, right? Like, it's just like what you see versus what you know. I think the exact same thing's going on right here. There's probably, that, maybe that's one person that spoke up, but there's probably a bunch of people that have done some shady stuff and God forbid it actually worked or hopefully their, their internal security tools are blocking that stuff from, from beaconing back and letting someone in. Yeah, that's the hope. I mean, for a million dollars, right? Like, there's, there's a price tag for everybody. Maybe that's why it pays so well. But who do you have to get? Like, do you think you can get, like, the janitor that's walking around the server room? Just plug this in, dude. It's all a mask. Uh, allegedly, back in the day when Stuxnet was around, allegedly, they think it was some kind of after-hours worker that stole the code signing certificate from Realtek, the Taiwanese chip maker or motherboard maker. Uh, they, they think it was somebody after hours went walked into some vault somewhere and stole the code signing certificate. So many things wrong with that. <laughs> gotta, gotta vet all your vendors. Yep. For our last topic, and it will be a rotating topic every week. This week we're going to talk about Apple's long-rumored Apple VR headset, rumored to be named just Apple VR. What we know so far is that instead of being a pair of glasses like Google Glass was, it's going to be a bulky headset with a battery pack that could attach to your waist. Unlike Meta's Oculus, that's fully self-contained unit, but they have those two hand controllers. The headset is expected to be announced at the Worldwide Developer Conference next week, or by the time you listen to it, it'll be this Wednesday. This is a major departure for Apple because all of the rumors point to this being a true V1 product. We know that Steve Jobs most likely would not have approved this form factor because every product he released was nearly perfect on its initial launch. Think about the first iPad, the iPhone 1, the MacBook Air. Those were released over a decade ago, and the versions of those products today look pretty darn close to their V1 versions because they were perfected before being released. The thought behind this rushed release is that Meta and other rivals like Microsoft HoloLens or Magic Leap are just so far ahead, Apple does not want to get left behind and they simply have no time to perfect this design before releasing a V1 product. The rumors are that it will cost Maybe 3500 bucks, maybe $2,000, we're not sure. And like Meta, Apple is hoping this VR headset will, will replace your corporate laptop. Will you guys be buying one? F, no, I will not be buying no. one. No, I'm de No. <laughs> this would be like, yeah. like I'm 100% with you. Like, if it really is like this crazy form factor and you gotta wear like a battery, well, uh, battery belt around your waist, like... Uh, that would be like Steve Jobs on stage revealing the very first Apple and having like a, a detachable keyboard or like a USB based keyboard plugged into it like that. This sounds wild. I'm with you. I can't believe they're doing this. If it actually looks like that, I'm going to be blown away. It's kind of like, like when you go to Disney World or Disneyland today, like I think Walt Disney would like roll over in his grave if he saw what was actually going on in these theme parks today. Yep. It's been a far departure from what he originally imagined for sure I don't know I, maybe maybe these things will be so big that you're going to put like a little bumper sticker on there that says like this is how I protect my virginity as you're walking around the house in your <laughs> VR world it's like a chastity belt <laughs> yeah I just yeah like I, I just want ready player one type of V1 product not this One of the yeah. one of the things that it might have over like Meta is the it's gonna be true augmented reality. I think that I think it's rumored to have like fourteen different cameras. So like when you're FaceTiming with with somebody, it'll it'll look at your face and it'll match your facial expression. It can't project your face because you're wearing the stupid headset, but it'll make a me emoji of you and copy your facial reactions exactly, and supposedly and this is just a rumor of course since it's not released of those 14 cameras it can watch your hands and your gestures and mimic those without the need for those dumb looking controllers that the uh, oculus quest that, requires you uh, to have the haptic a piss suit or something else the haptic suit yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you know 
the reason why I'd probably never wear one is you're just blind to the world, right? Like you ever see those people at the mall or inside a house and they're doing it and they fall off the cliff and they like hit something or they, they actually fall mm-hmm. down themselves. It's like, I, I need to see through the damn thing in order to make, have it make any real sense to me. Like well, my augmented invi- reality, my... you would be able to see through it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's augmented yeah. reality. You'd be able to see yeah. the screen and then it would overlay things on top, on top of it. So, Similar to like what the HoloLens does, like yeah. let's say I'm fixing a motorcycle, it'll tell me what part goes where, which part to unscrew. Like it, you can see the real world; it's just layers over it. Great. Ooh, great. So it, what's, that, what's, that, now. what's that game that you guys are running around like patching Pokemon? Is that the one where you're just running around and it's like augmented reality on your phone where you see things and you're capturing capturing these little critters for points yeah pokemon go i think was like that a little bit yeah that's yeah. fake augmented reality this is real <laughs> augmented reality are Still you buying one chris one. i oh I w- <laughs> we have a gullible sucker Uh-oh, possibly there you go if i can get the company to pay for it i'll i'll do it and then i'll i'll be the trial person for to see how this works i'm Dude, curious no, t- you're not buying it the company's buying it you shut your mouth <laughs> it's i'm intrigued by it i wouldn't spend 3500 dollars of my own money on it for sure if it if it can be a little bit more competitive cuz cuz the Oculus quest i think like the entry level quest is like 300 bucks so there's no way someone's going to pay 10 times more for would you, just because it's well, I, I'm sure there will be some people that'll pay ten times more because it's Apple. Would you guys use it for a monitor, like so that way you never had to sit in front of a monitor anymore, where it just displays in front of you? I don't know. I'd have to see mm. what the finished product looks like. Yeah. The quality of light, like it would have to do everything that my phone does and my laptop does and my light board does for me to be remotely interested in that. Like, it would have to be, like, so crazy. Yeah. I mean, I look at the sunglasses now. I think, who was it that makes it? Bose that makes them? Or is it Oakley that makes them with the earpieces that are attached to them so you can listen to music? Even those look yeah. funky to me. It's like, come on, guys. What a, yeah, what it, it's definitely on. something. I, I would never wear this out in public. I would never probably wear this in front of my family. This would have to be, like, a... Hold on. I'm, I'm, record that. I'm in the office. <laughs> record this now. Because <laughs> uh, Mr. Chris Louie is committed to never wearing this in public. And all of a sudden, like, three years later, we see him out in public wearing this thing with a mask. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm going to be out there looking like a goofball Ooh, yeah. wearing this thing. What if it yeah. gave you x-ray vision? And not to look through shirts, you disgusting things. <laughs> I mean, like, through walls, you can see, nice. you know, a safe and guns and stuff like that. How about that? See, that would be useful, like, if you could have an augmented reality of get the blueprint of a building, so I know exactly where the studs are in a building, because I'm doing some housework right now. If I could find out exactly where the studs are by putting this thing on, like, that, that's a good application of this. I'm, like, drilling random holes looking for studs, and, you know, if I could, if I could overlay that on top, then... Get a stud detector, dude. Come on. What the hell? They're, like, 15 bucks. <laughs> or try the knocking thing, the old man thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, tried I, I bought one. Mine things. just keeps beeping every time I walk by it. So yeah, we know. Yeah, you know. Hey, the ja- <laughs> dad joke is for the end, Glenn. Come on, <laughs> it's not a dad like joke. Two rules: you don't hold the stud detector without holding it to your chest and making the beeping noise, and then you don't hold the cordless drill without revving it at least two times. <laughs> Sometimes you go in my garage and rev it for no reason. Just walk out there, woo, woo, walk back, done my due diligence for the day, boys. Yeah. I'm intrigued. I'd, I'd like to see where this goes, how Apple takes it, because you know it's it's not always a first mover advantage that wins. It's the person that either Does appeals right. to the masses. Yeah, they consumerize it. They do it right. They're the ones that are going to win. So let's see if Apple like, can pull it off. If they can come out with like Apple contacts, and I just like walk up and I'm at like SKO, and everybody I'm looking at, they have no idea who the hell they are. It's like boom, pops up little emoji at the top of their head. Oh, this is uh, this is Jay Chowdhury, and he's worth you know fifty three billion dollars. Like, oh yeah, I need to pay attention to this guy. Like that'd be pretty cool. But I'm not gonna walk around like this entire thing, you know, masking a third of my head. Yeah. yeah, like that picture they have of Meta's office. Like, so they Meta required people to return to office, and everyone at Meta in the office is just wearing this headset. You could have done this at home. What was the point of coming in the office? 
It's a world. What kind of protocol guys. do you think he's going to use? I think he's going to be like, like quick. Not sure. They. It has to be efficient and not too heavy. I, actually, I think the headset's supposed to have the M1 in it, so it's actually going to be pretty powerful. The problem becomes how do you cool it without yeah, overheating? No. But even then, I mean, it's got to be a battery hog, right? That's why you have to wear the battery pack around your hip. Ugh. It's got two Chris is going to install VMware on there. And... I got someone to sue <laughs> yes, for XR. wearing it in the shower. I got someone to sue for wearing it in the shower. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's got to be waterproof. waterproof. Swim with it. <laughs> like the augmented reality shows you where you need to soap and where you need to scrub and where you haven't scrubbed yet. So... Ooh. Good use of that. Mm, yeah. I don't know. We have to, like, I had to think about this long and hard. That's what she said. And try to figure out, like, what would be, like, what would be practical for me to actually want to wear this? Maybe, maybe if it can yeah. record and, like, you know, when you're, like, having that conversation with your wife about something, and, like, two weeks later, she's like, no, you said this. But, mm, time out. And you're, put on my goggles. <laughs> play it back. And then play it back. <laughs> That's not what I said. Or I have a feeling I probably found out that I'm wrong a lot. Like, that would be pretty cool. That'd be a fact checker. It's the Brian Deach fact checker against his wife. <laughs> so. Yeah, that'd be fun. Or think of it like if you put on the headset, then you drive around in your razor, and they can spot like, oh, you can make this jump. You know, speed up to twenty five uh, miles an hour. You can safely oh, make this jump. Something like that. Yeah. Oh, twenty five miles an hour. I didn't care what AI has to say Ooh. about that. I'm gonna send it at seventy like, though. And then it's like, oops, we miscalculated. <laughs> <laughs> No, we met fifty, not seventy. <laughs> Dude, we went out last night in in the the Bronco, and uh, we were on like. <clears throat> I thought if like we were going down the hill, like if I was going maybe six miles per hour, and then like just hit the brakes, I think we would have toppled head over hills like just all the way down the hill. It was such a steep descent. I think it was like twenty seven degrees was the the descent going down. Wow. Like it was wild. Like you can feel the the seatbelt holding you in, and then on top of that, then we were tilted. Another seventeen degrees to the so oh, not wow. only did it feel like you're falling forward, but you're falling out. Man, this thing went right. Like it was no big deal. Like it was so much fun. Oh, Sounds like that would be cool. To tell the tale, yeah, yeah. Just like stare out and you see all the different trails and be like, oh, that's the sketchiest one, you know. And then definitively, like, like if it would show you like the path to take, like negotiating over the rocks, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, it takes away from some of the mystery though and guessing. I didn't bottom out at all. Yeah, the other thing I was thinking of, if anyone used to play Gran Turismo, that PlayStation racing game, like they would draw the line on the track that you would take, and it would say green for go, red for break. Like if they could overlay that on top of like a racetrack, then you know your average Joe Schmo driver could become a race car driver if they take the line and know when to speed up and when to break. I just need to clone myself so that way I, I don't have to work so hard. It'd be possible? cool. Like, what if it would show everyone's net worth? Like, I walk by a couple, Ooh. like Glenn, he's like negative two hundred thirty-five thousand. Walk by a homeless person, <laughs> seventeen <laughs> bucks. That'd be pretty cool. Chris Louis, ten million. <laughs> and it's uh, in parentheses, mostly Bitcoin. Yeah, <laughs> before taxes, it before owes taxes. nine point nine nine million in taxes. <laughs> Well, we continue to get great comments about our dad joke of the week. Dad joke of the week. This week, Brian's up. I don't think that we actually get any good comments on it. So, anyways, uh, my wife told me to stop impersonating flamingos. I had to put my foot down. We did it, Joe. Yeah, and... To provide a counter to that, I actually do get people that comment that they say the dad joke is the favorite part of their podcast. So we do continue to get great comments about it. Brian. I want to know, of the three of us, who's the best dad joke teller? Obviously me. Chris is... Yeah, right. Yeah, he's half <laughs> what are you saying? I'm last? Are you saying I'm last? I mean, I'm not no, saying he... you're first. Oh. <laughs> I think Brian did win the Try Not to Laugh Challenge only because he broke the rules, though. That has nothing to Whatever. do with telling a dad joke, though. That's just because he was biting his tongue. <laughs> you guys are biting your tongues. 
All right, to wrap things up, Kia and Hyundai still have not fixed their auto theft problem. Attackers are taking full advantage of the .zip top level domain. Tesla has a major insider threat problem. And Apple's VR headset will be its first V1 product launch. That's all I have for this week. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. You can find us all on LinkedIn. Links will be in the description. Follow us on Instagram at Pepcac Podcast. Thank you to all our listeners and subscribers who rate us five stars in the iTunes store and Spotify and left us a review. We appreciate you all spreading the word to help grow the show. The best way to find us is to search for the Pepcac Podcast on your favorite podcast listening app. For our co-host Brian Nietzsche, Glenn Medina, I'm Chris Louie. Thanks for listening. We'll see you all next weekend. As always, have a nice day. Bye, see Chris. Out! Have a nice day.